Good evening. Before we begin, just a friendly reminder, if you haven't moved up closer to the front, it really helps a great deal. And the programs are out up in the front of the AMBO if you have not picked up one. Again, I will be choir one, you will be choir two, but I also will be singing lightly along with choir two with you to help facilitate those who are on live stream because that way they have a little bit more intelligibility of text. And just also as a reminder, on the psalm tones, you come in after the organ plays the tone. Not right away, but take a breath and come in. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. The Gospel of the Lord. Of course, we heard that Gospel earlier today at Mass. It is a long tradition that the second Sunday of Lent is a day when the church hears one of the accounts of the transfiguration. It may be rooted in a tradition that the transfiguration happened approximately 40 days before Jesus' crucifixion, but certainly we know that Jesus intended this experience of his glory to strengthen Peter, James, and John. In our opening song for evening prayer, we we sang those five verses of "'Tis good, Lord, to be here." That song is inspired by this very gospel in the words of Peter, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. How many times St. Peter, St. John, St. James could have said those very same words at the multiplication of the loaves? Master, it's good that we're here. At the raising of Lazarus from the tomb, Master, it is good that we are here. At the Last Supper, Master, it is so good that we're here. And maybe St. John, at the side of the Blessed Mother, said, Master, it is good that we are here. And certainly at the resurrection, at the Holy Spirit, the Pentecost, Master, it is so good that we are here. But what about you and me, not Peter, James, and John, but you and I, disciples of the Lord, trying to live our Catholic faith in this world today? Might those words of St. Peter's be our own at times? Lord Jesus, it is good to be right here. I'd like to suggest four simple ways your prayerful mind and heart might arrive at some more, and that's good. The first is at the Eucharist, before the Blessed Sacrament, participating in Mass. What a gift it is, whether in person or through live stream, for us to be at the celebration of the Eucharist. Earlier today, I trust most or all of you, or maybe last night, it is so good to be with one another around the altar of God as Jesus transforms bread and wine into his body and blood and then invites us to receive that same body and blood. It is so good to be at Mass. It's so good to be at the Eucharist, and so good in your daily lives, when you can, to come to daily Mass, or to watch it on live stream, or to come into a church, this or another, and spend a few moments before the tabernacle, and say, Lord, it's just good to be here with you, And there's a second time when I think we can easily say this. It's in our daily prayer, especially when we break open the word, maybe our breviary, or maybe a prayer book, or certainly the Bible. Lord, it's good to be here in front of your word in the quiet solitude and intimacy of prayer. It's good to be here, even just for a few moments, a few minutes, maybe a holy hour. It's good to be before the Lord in prayer. 
But I'd like to suggest two other ways when, by the grace of God, you and I might say it's good to be here. And that's when we're in the presence of the poor, of someone marginalized, maybe someone on the street who smells or disrespects us, or maybe someone at work who's difficult, or maybe someone who asks for a handout, or maybe we're working at St. Patrick's Haven or another shelter, or maybe we just bump into somebody and we know their circumstances are difficult. If the spirit of Jesus is in us, and this can be a stretch for all of us at times, we can say, Master, it's good to be here right now in the presence, in your presence, under the disguise of the poor, and serve you and love you however I can. And one more, and this might be for some of us the greatest test, to say, Master, it's good to be here when we're doing our daily duty, <laughs> whatever that is, maybe very mundane, maybe very difficult, maybe trying our patience, maybe with difficult people, but it's our vocation. It's what we're called to do. Lord, it's good to be here, the place where by your providence you have placed me with the people you have placed me in these circumstances. Your grace is here. And so it's good to be here. You see, the transfiguration, as we know, was not just a certain privilege given to Peter, James, and John, just a glory in the radiance of Jesus in such a consoling way, but to strengthen them to be with Jesus in the difficult and dark days, especially the crucifixion. And so we need to take this day, the second Sunday of Lent, when we read the transfiguration, to be with the Lord and say it's good when we're with him in the sacraments of the church, especially the Eucharist, and when we're with him in the word and all his radiant glory, but also when we're with him in the poor and in our daily tasks, his grace unites us. All we need to say is, Lord, I'm here. I want to be with you. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world.
Let us give thanks continually to Christ, our teacher and our head, who came to serve and to do good to all. In humility and confidence, let us ask him. Lord, be present to the bishops and priests of your church who share your role as head and shepherd. May they lead your people to the Father under your guidance. Come, Lord, to visit your head. May your angel be with all who travel to keep them safe in soul and body. Come, Lord, to visit your head. Teach us to serve the needs of others and to be like you who came to serve, not to be served. Grant that in the human family we may always help one another so that with your assistance it may be a city compact and strong. Come, Lord, to visit your kingdom. Have mercy on all the dead. Bring them to the vision of your glory. Come, Lord, to visit your kingdom. Together let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God our Father, help us to hear your Son, Enlighten us with your word, that we may find the way to your glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.